All right, it looks like we're live. Uh, welcome everybody to the campfire. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you today. Uh, just a quick note, uh, today is um, protecting your uh, WordPress site, um, security tips for WordPress, and uh, welcome to episode two of the campfire. Um, this is a podcast for internet geeks, so uh, if you're an aspiring internet geek, you love internet geeks, or, um, or you're one yourself, you're in the right place. Uh, so in each episode, we invite a guest from the global web professional community to tell their story to the internet and provide actionable advice that a developer, designer, or entrepreneur can use to kick more ass in their business. Um, so we're excited you're with us. Um, we have a great crew. Uh, on the Hangout today, and we'll uh, we'll get started. So I want to intro a few people that you didn't meet um, the last time we had our Hangout. Um, so the the first person I want to introduce is Marcus Couch. Marcus is going to be co-hosting uh, the campfire from now on, and uh, he's a, a member of the WordPress community, a community enthusiast, in fact, and. Uh, does a, a couple podcasts, WordPress plugins A to Z and WordPress Weekly. I'll let him introduce himself a little bit. So, Marcus, over to you. Yeah, Mendel, I've worked online uh, with and without WordPress, so to speak, for the last 15 years. I do a lot for enterprise level clients, a lot of franchise level clients as well. So, we do uh, not only uh, larger things with WordPress, but we get granular down to even mom and pop and kind of blogger level as well. So there's a lot to be learned um, throughout WordPress as far as um, you know sales, marketing, entrepreneurship, and today we're going to be talking security. So I'm looking forward to my participation in the show and some of the things that we can bring forth to the viewers, and um, it's, it's, it's really exciting for me as well. Sweet. You know what? We need to get some sound effects for this show because I like. I feel like we should have like a clap or something at that point, right? Like, like a crowd clapping or something. Um, yeah, we'll build into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stuff, stuff is gonna get crazier and crazier uh, on this hangout. All right, and so uh, then we have Kurt Payne, and Kurt Payne is one of our guest hosts. Um, he's a uh, he's a badass software developer working. On the GoDaddy WordPress hosting, uh, managed WordPress hosting um, infrastructure. He's an author of the P3 plugin and has been a WordPress core contributor in the past. So I'll let uh, I'll let Kurt introduce himself. Um, hi everyone. So I've been uh, employed at GoDaddy for going on eight years now. Most of that time spent in hosting. I'm pretty passionate about hosting, web performance, uh, spent a lot of time with WordPress, been a contributor, and you can see my love for performance and hosting come through with the P3 plugin and uh, my work on the managed WordPress platform. So back awesome. over to you, Mendel. Sweet. Thanks, Kurt. Um, and oh, <laughs> I almost forgot to introduce myself. So I'm Mendel, I'm the host of the show, and uh, I am uh, GoDaddy's evangelist, but um, I'm, I'm I'm a huge nerd. Um, I spend Saturday nights sometimes coding. Uh, it's an affliction, but uh, but but I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, I travel around the world and I hang out with developers, designers, and entrepreneurs, and um, and help uh, figure out how um, how we can create products and stuff like that that um, that are awesome for them. Um, I'm also an avid hiker. Um, love to do that, and uh, live in Austin, Texas. So I get the opportunity to get out into the country uh, a little bit, which is nice. Although some say the mountains are better. Uh, anyway, um, without further ado, uh, I want to introduce Joshua Joshua McNary. Uh, he's the founder of McNary Marketing uh, and Design, and a technologist and WordPress enthusiast. He's also a pretty rad guy. He's, uh, he's I think, in the Vault co-working space right now in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, anyway, I'll let you introduce yourself, Joshua. Sure, yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, yeah, my name is Josh McNary, and uh, I'm really happy to be with all you guys here on the, on the Hangouts world today. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a marketing technologist. I help uh, businesses, entrepreneurs, uh, people in nonprofit work help figure out how to manage the digital marketing and sales space. And uh, I use WordPress uh, 
for a lot of that work. So I'm happy to be here today and share some of my tips on how to be more secure with regards to how you use WordPress. Awesome. And uh, Joshua McNary, by the way, I'll tell you, he has the coolest Twitter avatar, I think, of anybody I know. Um, it's iconic. So uh, when, you, when you see his, his Twitter handle on his next slide, um, make sure and check it out because it's, uh, it's a pretty, I'm, I'm pretty jealous of his, of his Twitter avatar, to tell you the truth. Um, anyway, all right, so let's get started. Uh, we'll get into it. Joshua is going to give us some, uh, some information on WordPress security, things that you should be doing for your site uh, if you have a WordPress um, installation and without further ado let's go ahead and throw the the slide deck up there and get rolling. All so right. You throw your screen. Yeah, here it comes. Cool. Oh, by the way, while he's doing that, if uh, if any of the viewers have any questions um, during the show, please post them in the hangout um, on the hangout event on uh, on Google Plus, and we'll address those questions as as we go through things. And, uh, and if you want to uh, hear Joshua stop for a second and answer a question, that's cool too. Uh, we'll, we'll bubble it to him, so uh, just throw it, uh, throw it on the event. And uh, with that, if everybody else on the call wants to mute their mics, that'd be great while uh, Joshua goes through it. All right, so you guys can see that avatar Mendel was talking about now? That thing is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, so yeah, there it is. So you'll, if you see that, I use that in most of my social media profiles. So if you find me out there, you'll see that and be happy to chat with you that way. But uh, yeah, so as, as we were saying, um, uh, my work is with regards to marketing and sales technologies and uh, making sure that businesses and, and entrepreneurs and nonprofits have the best tools and services available to manage this ever-changing digital market space we all find ourselves part of. So... Um, while I do consider myself a web developer, uh, I'm not an IT department, uh, but a business person who really helps companies with those issues of marketing technology I was talking about earlier. And one of my favorite tools to really do that with is WordPress. So it's you know around 20% of the web is uh, is being programmed with some kind of WordPress uh, backed CMS site, and uh, it gives you so much power to develop great looking, functioning, and useful websites. And that's why we all love and use it. And it's also got that great CMS behind it uh, to actually manage and, and change your content very easily. But due to that popularity, it is a target, as we know, and that's why we're all here to talk about WordPress security. So I get a lot of questions when I mention WordPress to folks I'm working with about, hey, why do we want to use this WordPress? And uh, I tell them all the wonderful things we just alluded to, but then we get into the next question is that security issue. And while WordPress is involved, it has improved in this area over the last few years, it's still really a big target for any nefarious actors out there trying to ruin your day. So here's a number of steps I've taken with my sites and my clients' sites to help avoid those potential problems and uh, tips to help you keep your site more secure. Now before we get into those details, I want to mention something. There really is no magic bullet or magic solution you can make to make sure your WordPress site is absolutely bulletproof forever. Uh, even if you implement everything we suggest in my tips and as my colleagues here will tell you other ideas as well, uh, there's good, always going to be more to do to protect yourself and it's really never going to end. It's going to be an ongoing battle to make sure your site remains secure. Hey, just a second. Uh, sorry, Joshua. Um, let's, uh, let's hold for a second. We've got to figure it out because uh, people aren't seeing your presentation. Um, okay. So, so let's, uh, let's check this out really quick. Okay. Um, hey, uh, Kurt, can you, can you hit the, the down arrow on the top right of, um, uh, of Joshua's uh, avatar and see if you can... I, I think you might have control. <laughs> what, 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 what are you seeing, guys? Um, I'm hearing that on the live feed there's no... Uh, okay. What do I need to do after I click that down arrow? Yeah, do you see any options there? Uh, profile, ignore, and mute. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll, well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, if, if for some reason we can't, um, we, we can't see the presentation slides, then uh, we'll have them posted afterwards too. So... 
Okay. Um, let's just. So, so can what can the folks see? Can you just see the uh, my blank screen out there? Is that what they're seeing? Uh, I guess maybe they're just seeing my pretty face. Okay. Do you want to see my pretty face while I do this, or do you? Um. Yeah. I. I mean. Sure. Uh. We can. We can try continuing to. Um. To throw the slide deck on there, but. Yeah, I could see the slide deck in the room here. It's just probably not in the live feed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Cool. Let's. Uh. Let's keep going. I don't want to. I don't want to derail it. We don't have. Um. Forever and ever. So. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm gonna stop the screen if that's not working for folks, and so you can at least see me versus nothing. And okay. uh, and I'll and, and yeah, we'll definitely post up the slides to everyone uh, uh, afterwards. Um, they're you know, they're I'm a marketer, so they're pretty looking slides. But uh, the information <laughs> you're gonna get from me just talking, I think, will be still useful for everyone. Awesome. Okay. So, yeah. So I was uh, just noting that um, really the uh, there's no magic solution. So you're always going to be needing to consider these issues we're going to talk about today. And I don't want you to walk away from today thinking that well I attended this webinar I got these great tips. Okay, now I could be I'm secure. That's not how it's going to work. You could always be hacked. You could always manually send a password over an insecure Wi-Fi network. Um, or uh, you know you can end up uh, uh, just having uh, changes to the way your your system your WordPress system is being operating in the future and not have properly done an update. So keep that in mind. Um, the other thing I want to also note is that you could do all these tips today, and these things we're going to talk about, at least in, in the first part of my talk here, won't take you a ton of time to implement, but you might want to consider um, the, the trade-off, the return on investment you're going to make from implementing and maintaining these kind of security tips first possibly thinking about just offloading some of these security problems. Um, so I'm not here to sponsor any necessary, any particular solution out there, but if you're on just a self-hosted shared server account like you would generically get from GoDaddy or any other host, you might consider a, a more managed WordPress solution. And uh, uh, GoDaddy has a managed WordPress solution, and then many other hosts have those solutions out there, and they help to keep you secure. So you might consider um, checking one of those out and allowing you to focus on your content, on your business, on, um, on persuading your visitors to your perspective, whatever you're trying to do with your website, probably the reason you created your website in the first place, uh, and offload the security issues so that uh, you can focus on your business. All right, so with that being said, let's get on to those practical eight tips. And um, I, would, uh, I was going to mention this anyways to you, but especially because you can't see the slides. Go ahead and grab your notepad or, or pop up that Evernote uh, uh, note right now and, and, and jot these down. Yeah, and actually, uh, Colby, let's go ahead and post those into the um, the the Hangout event too, so that people have them as we're we're going through. Right on. All right, so number one, the first thing you want to do when you create your WordPress website or log in for the first time if someone else had handled it for you in some capacity is to change the default admin administrator user pass uh, username to something else. Uh, the default might be something like admin, which is prime fodder for brute force attacks on your logon screen. Uh, you might also want to avoid other common usernames like info or uh, administrator or webmaster, as these are all also could be targets for uh, the hackers to try to uh, get in and, and know at least one part of your login screen information. I usually create something totally random but memori uh, memorable to, to the site I'm creating. Um, and that includes both numbers and special characters that are allowed in the username field. So if uh, I was creating a website for, say, a dog kennel, I might uh, use a username like Puggle23 underscore Beagle98. So it's not totally insane. I can remember that, but I also am able to um, uh, know it's not something that's going to be really obvious to someone trying to throw a spider or some kind of machine at that login screen to hack in. Number two. The password for any of your WordPress logins uh, need to be unique, and they should have similar characteristics to the usernames I just noted, uh, if not making them entirely random. So um, you probably want to use a tool like LastPass or 1Password to create unique and totally random passwords for all of your sites. But even if you do not invest in that kind of tool to manage your WordPress, uh, WordPress logins, or really any of your logins for your uh, web properties across the web, you can at least create a, use, a unique password with words, numbers, and special characters, which make it harder for hackers to crack. So the less human readable, the more varied characters, and the longer your passwords, the better off you're going to be. Number three. Everyone should know this one already, but uh, 
it's always important to remind you to keep your WordPress core up to date. The patches that come out for WordPress often include the security helps you need uh, to make sure you're secure, in addition to those features that you get along with them that you see visually and love to get. So uh, try to update your site within a day or a week of those patches. Um, I typically wait a few days to ensure that the patch is not causing any issues uh, with, with the general WordPress user base or with any of the themes or plugins that I'm relying on with my sites. Um, and if there are any issues, then I go ahead and troubleshoot those late at night or when it's off time for the site that I'm uh, working with, um, or in possibly some kind of test environment if I've got that set up for a site. Um, further, um, when you see theme or plugin uh, updates come in, make sure you're updating them promptly as well. Now, one thing to note with this is one big improvement in, uh, came in last year on, on WordPress 3.7, a number of uh, versions ago, uh, the system now automatically updates the core to the latest release. So um, you could also uh, turn this off, like I was implying I do, at least for some of my sites, so that I have more control over when that update is applied. But if you leave it on, which would work for a majority of situations, um, you'll know that you're up to date all the time, at least with regards to the core files. It won't do that necessarily for your theme files or your plugin files, um, so you're going to need to keep your uh, eyes on those. So number four, uh, plugins in WordPress are one of its best features, as we all know and love, uh, and it allows ex expansion to your site's abilities to great end. However, since the plugins have access to your WordPress files and database, you need to make sure you're using them wisely. So be careful how many you install, and only use the ones that are legitimate. Uh, a quick Google search of any fishy plugins or checking the reviews in the, uh, in the WordPress li uh, plugin library will help you make sure that they're safe to use and there's no big gotchas. Now, over time, you could also make sure any plugins you choose to no longer use are either deleted or deactivated, better just to have deleted, but uh, get them turned off and deleted so that you can make sure your site stays tight and uh, doesn't have any backdoors um, as you go forward. Number five, another tool I've utilized is a login limiting plugin, which locks out an IP address for a period of time if the user fails to get the correct username password combo after a set amount of tries. Now, this is effectively uh, uh, allows you to squelch any of those brute force attacks that might come across uh, because they're going to get stopped after they try a few combos, and they're probably not going to get it in the first couple. So uh, a plugin that's been popular over the years for this is called Logon Limited Attempts, um, and it's, uh, it's a good free plugin. However, it hasn't been updated real recently, and there's a tip for you is, you know, whenever you're installing a plugin from a security perspective, you want to make sure it's being actively developed or updated by the developer so that it's uh, compatible with the current editions of WordPress but also doesn't have any big holes in it. Uh, so this is an example of one that's very popular, but it maybe is a little dated. So um, another one might, you might consider is called Brute Protect, um, and there's also a number of other plugins that do a similar type of thing or security suites that do this. So check those out in the plugin library and get one installed. Number six. To take your security to another level on sites you really want to keep the bad guys out of, you can use a multi-factor type authentication. And this has become more popular in a lot of the uh, web services out there. I think Apple just implemented it here like last month. Uh, you can use the Google Authenticator plugin uh, to enable this type of feature for you. And what it does is it requires a login to your sites having the username, the password, which you've already made both super strong, and then a changing code, which changes on a 60-second interval, and it's only located in your personal smartphone's Google Authenticator app. This makes hacking a lot more difficult, and the only downside I've really seen to this is that some tools or plugins or services um, won't work quite properly when this is installed. Um, so if after installing this, you see that uh, that third-party uh, tool that you're trying to plug in or that, plug that actual plugin you're using isn't working quite right, this might be the culprit. So uh, that might uh, determine if you can use this one or not. So number seven, running a service like a, serv a, a security malware scanner on your site will allow you to keep tabs on your site's health and ensure that no bad guys can got in the back door when you weren't looking. So if you do find any issues, you can contact these tools providers typically to help you out directly. You can reach out to a developer like me or somebody else that you know that can help you fix the problem um, or fix it yourself if you have the chops to do that. 
the company security has a plugin that you can get that will run the test for you regularly. Um, or you could also run scans directly on their website. You could also just get this kind of malware scanning if you have that managed WordPress type stuff I was talking about earlier uh, that GoDaddy has or other hosts also provide. And number eight, the last practical tip that I was going to pitch at you guys today is I would advise all WordPress site users to have that proper backup of their site always in their back pocket. I mean, I don't know how many times we can say this to people, but um, it's easy to forget and easy to uh, let go until you have a problem. Uh, if you have a good backup, if any hacks happen or any other problems for that matter come to be, you at least can restore your site to the most recent backup that you have, and you won't lose all of that work that you put into the site from whenever you last did a backup. Using WordPress plugins, this can be manageable for almost anybody to do. You can set, set it and forget it. Um, Updraft Plus plugin is an example, or there's uh, plugin slash service um, options like Backup Buddy or others out there that can do this. Um, but keep in mind that some of these tools, um, by default, will just store a copy right next alongside of your main WordPress installation. And that may not be the best situation for, um, for you to, to, to work in, because if something happens to your main install, uh, may say it's it all erased or something, uh, you won't have a, a separate copy you can bring back. So I always suggest that you have it go off, have the tool move it to another server or, no, or uh, send it to your computer in some capacity where you actually have a solid backup available in a different location. Another option is for your host to help you out. Uh, many hosts provide a service to allow you to do auto backups and, and also um, those third-party uh, dedicated services I alluded to a moment ago, and there's a lot of them out there, uh, can also back up your site independently and put it off to another location. So there's the eight practical tips I wanted to throw out to get us started today. Uh, eight things you should do to make sure your WordPress site is more secure. From there, you can continue to build layers of security into your site as you mature as a WordPress developer, uh, as a user and um, come across other specific problems that might appear in your environment. So the great that news... Was, that yeah. was awesome, Joshua. Uh, and so we have, we have all eight of those tips posted on uh, the, Google, the Google Hangout. Um, so really great tips. Um, how, did you, how did you come up with these things? Like, what, was it experiences that you had, or was it... Um, was it clients that had issues, or how, how did you come up with this? Where does this come from? Um, the school of hard knocks. <laughs> um, no, I mean, actually, most of these things, um, um, you know, as you, as, you're, as you start building and, and, and developing these WordPress sites, whether it's for yourself and certainly for clients, you know, you just want to make sure that that investment you make into them uh, isn't taken away by somebody just messing with you. And so, you know, I, I, I basically um, just doing my due diligence over time started to learn some of these tips. And these are really, you know, these are pretty basic tips, uh, but not everyone does them. And, you know, maybe a, a client of mine, a lot of times I have people come to me and they've maybe used a WordPress site before. They know I do WordPress stuff, so they come to me. And I try to help them out. But, uh, you know, they, they haven't even done some of the simple stuff that you see here. So that's why, you know, I take the opportunity today just to say, hey, you know, make sure you're doing these things, or if you're not doing them, you have a good reason why you're not doing them, and, um, and go from there. Cool. And one of the things that I've noticed is oftentimes, whether that be developers or site owners, business owners, and the like, uh, they forget a website is actually a web property, and therefore, just like your house, you put locks on the door, uh, you've got to maintain some sense of security within your property. And that's exactly what we're, the higher talk is today, is make, making sure that your web property is secure and safe. Yeah. Yeah, and it's important, right? Because uh, a lot of people, it's their livelihood, you know? And, uh, and it, you know, my, my website is, you know, just, just tips and tricks, but some people rely on that for their, for their you know, their daily business, um, how, how they're actually, uh, you know, growing their business and things like that. And so if it's not secure, if somebody else takes some of the, um, uh, you know, takes, takes some of your search engine juice away by injecting their own stuff uh, um, or, you know, maliciously or something like that because your site isn't secure, it causes a big, big problem um, and, and you can lose actual revenue. Um, so, uh, 
So yeah, security super super important. Um, how how often are you building uh, WordPress sites, Joshua, or or is it kind of a hobby thing right now? Oh no, it's it's uh, it's part of my business. I, I do. Uh, uh, so as a marketing technologist, generically, probably half my work is web development oriented, and I tell people about three fourths of that is WordPress directly related to WordPress in some capacity. Uh, it might be an e-commerce type or a solution, or it might just be uh, more of a, a generic profile site of some type, or some other sales site or sales vehicle. Um, and then the other work I'm doing is uh, maybe in regards to um, uh, customer relationship management systems or other marketing, uh, campaign marketing, email marketing, across the board. Basically, taking the taking the business and uh, business or 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 nonprofit or entrepreneurs' priorities that they need to get out get to market with and implementing and making it happen. So, WordPress stuff, man. I'm doing pretty much every day uh, something with WordPress. Um, I've got you know a handful of uh, new projects that just started this week. Okay, cool. So let's talk about your business. Yeah. Um, so security tips are awesome. The, uh, we'll we'll post the. Um, the presentation, um, I'm guessing you'll probably throw it on SlideShare or something like that, so we'll embed that. Um, and then uh, and then we'll have some additional security tips uh, at the campfire.tv, which is the new website for this um, this hangout series, this hangout series and podcast. But um, let's talk a little bit about you as a business owner and uh, you as somebody that is right now sitting in a co-working facility um, you know, making things work day in and day out, and I know that you haven't been doing it like this uh, all your life. In fact, you just started um, doing this full time a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, well, actually, full time has just been 2014, really. But I've been doing um, freelance type work, which I'm sure there's a, a good crowd on the on the call today that uh, uh, are in that situation where they're doing this freelance. I did that for about a decade. Um, after I moved to Iowa from the Washington D.C. area, and people were, "Hey, can you help me with marketing and uh, digital marketing type issues?" So yeah, last year I, I basically um, got plugged in. Well, actually, about two three years ago here in the Cedar Rapids area, what we call the Creative Corridor of Iowa. Um, also, uh, we call this general area of the Midwest the Silicon Prairie. Uh, shameless, shameless plug. Where do you find more out about uh, yeah. <laughs> Silicon Prairie or or, um, or yeah. the Creative Corridor? Are there yeah, websites? So, so yeah, there's the Silicon Prairie News. You can check out their site uh, for uh, information about. That's kind of that's uh, Iowa, um, Omaha, Kansas City, etc. And then if you're interested in what, what the specific region I'm in, it's the Creative Corridor.co.co, and they have a great e-newsletter and stuff there. But anywho, um, I got plugged into that uh, here in Iowa, and and more specific to your question, uh, as we got to the end of 2013, uh, friends here, people that I've been networking here uh, in the community with, were starting to send me an immense amount of work. Uh, they knew I did this stuff freelance, and I just started getting, hey, there's this website project, or hey, here's this this uh, sales workflow problem this company has with their sales team, or uh, hey, they need help with this marketing campaign, and. I realized that you know what I could do this full time, and um, and it just seemed like the right time. So um, uh, that's kind of the abbreviated version of how that happened. But it, it essentially was you know the writing was on the wall for me, and uh, I went full time with it, and it's been awesome. Cool. So tell me about struggles, and I'll let um, I'll let Marcus ask a couple questions too. But uh, before we do that, I I want to know um, I want to know about like. Like personal struggles, right? Now I don't want to. I don't want to know this to uh, you know poke poke fun at um, something. I want other people on uh, this hangout and eventually listening in audio on the podcast to kind of understand what is some of the stuff that you go through when you're starting your business and you're working out of a co-working space and presumably you have a family, you know, and you know what you know. What what have you struggled with uh, as you've started your own venture and gone full time? Yeah, well, um, Mel, you know, because we, you know, I don't know if you might have met my family from time to time here at Vault, but uh, Vault Coworking. But uh, yeah, I've got kids. I've got you know, I've, I've been a married guy for ten years now. Um, so you know, I that was a, a big part of wanting to go off on my own was to have more opportunity to support my family. But you know doing that versus kind of t 
taking the check every week from a full time type employer, it's uh, it's a big a big change for an entire family. Or you know, even if you don't have a family, um, if you're talking about uh, uh, you're talking about even just you know your friends or your or your mom and dad, um, you know, getting them to buy into what you're trying to do in uh, some kind of uh, Web technology oriented business, uh, which is so new really to the world, is it, difficult. So um, that that's that's hard. Just kind of getting people to buy in. And the part of the backstory I didn't mention, uh, my first note when you asked how, how what was the reason I jumped, uh, was that I took basically a year, um, the year of 2013, to kind of figure out where I was going to go, what I, what I was going to do next with my career. And uh, it wasn't intentional that I was going to do end up leaping off on my own like this, but I was intentional in talking to people, meeting for coffees, um, and then asking them who I can meet for coffee, and just think about what skills I can provide to the world and be best at. And, um, and, and at what off, point? What point did you kind of cross that bridge or choose that path, so to speak? Yeah. Where uh, it was okay? Should I take? the gig, the full-time gig, or should I just convince these guys to be my client? Right. Like what, was, right. what was that moment for you where you right. branched that apart? Well, um, well, first I'll answer it this way. And, and you didn't, we didn't plan this because you planted the question well for me. I was about to say that <laughs> for me, it was, uh, it was during those coffees and during that time yeah. period, I was kind of figuring out where I was going next. I had a date night with my wife, which we do from time to time, get away from the kids. And she basically looked at me across the table and was like, you need to do something on your own. Mm -hmm. And that to me actually was, you know, it, I kind of already, in my mind, I wanted to, but it was the fact that my family, my, the person that's closest to me said, hey, go for this. Mm -hmm. She didn't know what that meant. She still doesn't know what that means. But, mm -hmm. but, but you know, she, she, was, she was a part of me. So that to me was huge. And it could be, again, it could be a, a close friend telling you that. It could be your mom or whatever. It doesn't have to be your spouse necessarily. But uh, for that, that was a huge part that kind of, that actually then launched me to, to figure out, okay, how am I going to actually implement this? Um, as mm -hmm. far as those clients, though, go, you know, the cool thing about working in a freelance mode for a while is that I already had clients, and I already had kind of figured out some of the hard part. So I had contracts. I had systems in place. I already implemented Basecamp and QuickBooks and all these systems and things you need to run a small business. Um, so when I decided to go forward with this, I already had some of the tools in place um, to basically turn those people who are part-time clients or freelance clients and say, hey, look, I'm doing this full-time now. What else can we do? So it it sounds like you really had a lot of support from your wife though, which is which is awesome, right? You want to you want to be supported by somebody in your life, right? Somebody that's important, whether it's a you know a life partner or or, or a friend or um, a community. Uh, that that support, knowing that somebody's there to um, to catch you if you fall, you know, or or, or help push you back up or encourage you. I think that seems like a big piece of it, right? Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, the community element is huge. I mean, I started out talking about the community here in my region, the entrepreneurial community here, and that's that's been huge. And and, and I've definitely been able to leverage that um, and give back to that too, which I think is important. Um, and then the family side I was just speaking to, but then I'd also say, you know, I mean, people on this hang out. I mean, this is a community right now we're talking to. And, um, you know, we're all giving back. We're all in different locations. We're, we're all giving back to that because we've got something to share. And I think that's one thing I learned along the way is that um, it's a lot about, you know, DO, just do it. Just do it. Don't be afraid to try something. Um, you know, you're not going to end up in a box on the street if you're willing to adapt and pivot your perspective and keep trying new things. Now, if you're really stuck on one thing and you're you're not willing to adapt, then you know then you're not going to have as much success. But I think that that's huge, and you know you can learn really easily from the community. Come on these types of calls, uh, you know, take advantage of the forums and different tools that are available out there, and you can learn some of the mistakes that some of those others have made, or maybe some of the, the successful things that have worked for us, and avoid some of the common mistakes. You know, whether it's WordPress security or uh, you know, business uh, starting up a business. So, Joshua, did you uh, did you have a backup plan? Because a lot of people are <laughs> are scared of ending up in the box on the streets, especially you know some of the uh, more left brain thinkers, analytical thinkers among us, sure. who uh, 
you know, who think through all of the inevitabilities, possibilities uh, of taking that that kind of that leap of, of faith faith in yourself. So, did you have a backup plan? Yeah. Um, well, so I did definitely think through a lot of things. So um, I guess I have I do have some of the analytic brain too. I, um, you know, actually, it's funny. Back when I first moved uh, to Iowa, uh, before I took a full time job, I had a uh, I had a spreadsheet I probably did in, on the old PC I had on Excel or something, uh, you know, figuring out what if I did this full time, what could I do? You know, this was 10 years ago, 10, 10 12 years ago now. And um, so I've been thinking that way for a long time, but it, for me what it really turned into was a journey to figure out that I, you know, convince myself I had the skills to actually be able to do this kind of thing. And, um, you know, to do, to do this kind of work right, you know, uh, maybe a typical developer, um, or, you know, I don't know, the prototypical developer that's in the basement working late, like Mendel was talking about earlier, you know, all night, you know, you're not going to be up at 8 a.m. to have that coffee with the potential client. You know, so for me, I kind of have, I, I was able to, to develop skills in sales and marketing and the technical side and then kind of bridge those things for people in a way that worked really good for me. Um, but... Um, I, I got to say one thing about, about one of your points. I've been there where the end result on an Excel spreadsheet completely changed my life decision, right? <laughs> I mean, it was like, okay, let's figure out, let's see if we can make a decision on this, and whatever that was, whatever that formulation happened to be, and, and I prayed that I got that formula right, uh, changed your life. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I mean, it's. I guess I walked into it just thinking to myself, look, if I need to deliver pizzas to make this work at some point, I'm willing to do that. And my wife and I were okay with that. But it took a while, you know, at least a year and then really 10 years to get to the point where I was willing to try that. And, okay, you know, so, I, I, and I don't know where it's going to take me yet. You know, we'll see what happens next year. So what is that What is that drive, right? Like, like you're like, you know what, man, the heck with it. If I have to deliver pizzas, I'm delivering pizzas. If I have to go, you know, work at Burger King. I'm gonna do that, and I know what it's like, right? Because I I did that, right? I lived out of my car. If you know, um, I, I should probably type up the story sometime, right? But I I <laughs> I lived out of my car for a while, slinging websites because I just I just loved it, right? Like that was my that was my that was my jam, right? So what is it that drives you to want to do that? What is it? You know, you say, man, you know, I would, I would do anything. I would struggle. I would let my life get crazy just so that I could do this. Is it, is it working as your own boss? Is it having free time, it, uh, which clearly you probably don't have as much of, right? Being an entrepreneur, is it? You know, what is that drive? What is it that makes you want to do what, what you're doing? Yeah, well, um, well, it's fun. It's a passion to do something on your own, and and I, I don't I don't except I was starting to say I, I don't I don't know where I'm going to be next year. I have some other ideas, some other entrepreneurial ideas next year I want to do. So check in with me in a year, and I'll probably be look a little different, you know, from a career perspective. Um, but you know, like yesterday, I mean, and again, I'm talking about family here a little bit. But you know, like yesterday, I was able to go help my son with the science fair at his school. You know, he he got it first place. Awesome, uh, but but you know, like you know, I was able to do that, and then you know, I went back home and I worked on this presentation in the evening a little more. It's just it's that's a different lifestyle, and I again, it's not the nine to five type mentality, um, and uh, and so that that's you know, to me that at the end of the day, that's what it's about. You know, obviously we all want to have uh, enough uh, resources to to support our family, and but for me at the end of the day, it's about doing something I'm passionate about through the day, and that, that you know, right now that's doing some great work helping people out with their uh, sales and marketing technology needs. Um, and then I've got some productivity things I do. I'm really interested in uh, productivity and efficiency in your own life and in your business. And I'm going to be doing some more stat stuff into next year. And then just being involved with my community here. I'm, it's, there's all these amazing things I get to do here. So it, that, it's all it's all of that. That's 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 badass. Um, and and it makes me it gets me excited, right? Like I want to go and um, follow you, you know, and see where you're at next and. And see how your life is progressing because um, because it's cool, you know. Um, you you stand for something, and I think that's kind of a 
you know, a common thread for, for entrepreneurs or, you know, developers and designers that, that you're, you're standing up and you're saying, listen, I'm not just an ordinary person, right? I stand for something that I believe in and I don't care what it takes, I'm going to do it. Right? And well, that, see, the that, thing is, the thing is, is that I am really an ordinary, and we're all an ordinary people on this call. We're just having to be in the little bubbles on, on Hangout. <laughs> Anybody out there that wants to make something happen, you just got to start. You got to start somewhere. You got to start doing it. Take the little, take the big thing, the big audacious goal you have, whether it's being a web developer or whatever you have, and go ahead and 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 just slice it into pieces and start doing something on it, and you'll start to work your way. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, other other questions from uh, the audience. If if you do have a question, um, I know that the video situation is a little odd uh, right now. Hopefully, you can see um, many uh, many bits of of video from the other people on the call uh, instead of just my face. Uh, we are having a bit of a glitch with. Um, with the Hangouts on Air right now, so that's what's going on. But if you have questions, post them in the Google Plus um, uh, Hangout page so that we can answer those questions. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Marcus or Kurt, do you have do you have any other thoughts? Uh, or questions? I, I do. I actually have a couple. So uh, I think I dropped out when you were talking about backups. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, just from what I've seen with uh, with customers who uh, had their site compromised and they actually rolled back to a backup, I just wanted to give a tip out to the audience that if you do roll back to a backup, make sure you delete the site first or or take a you know a copy of that, and move it out of the way, um, because if your site gets compromised and someone drops in a a backdoor, a shell, or something like that and then you just restore from a backup, it won't remove any additional files that were added by an attacker. So that's something that I, I see that, you know, the, the backup and restore advice often, and I just want to add that, that one little twist to it uh, to make sure that you don't get reinfected, is to, you know, remove that so all the, the files that anyone added get removed as well. Cool. Um, yeah, and then also just make sure you get your themes and plugins from a reputable source. Um, we've seen several, <laughs> that's, several. That's a big one, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and if you don't know, you, you guys with BitTorrent, th that's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, if you ever get a free theme, unless it's from the main repo, uh, yeah. it's probably a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty easy to tell if someone's a reputable source or not. If you can contact them, if they have a phone number, if they have uh, support forums with messages on there, uh, they go back more than a week. Uh, you know that type of of uh, of evidence. If they have a Twitter account uh, with messages being passed back and forth, uh, you know, look for look for evidence that they've been around, that they support their products, that it's a, a real place. Um, if you get the theme, you know, you can actually take those screenshots, pass them through 10i. Uh, if you have any questions at all, do your research and make sure it's a reputable place. Uh, what is kind of a common practice is uh, someone will get a hold of a premium theme, install a backdoor, and then make it available on you know on BitTorrent or somewhere, and then a, a thrifty consumer out there will will find that, install it on their site, and then that theme will call home, and and then the attacker just has a site waiting for them. So uh, just make sure you're you're getting your themes from reputable places, and then if you no longer need that theme. Don't just deactivate it. Delete it because those files are still there. They're still accessible, even if it's not active. That goes along with what Josh said about deleting unused plugins. So just make sure you do the same with themes. That's right. And even with themes, um, you know, most themes, the most expensive ones out there from the the reputable sources, as you mentioned, are maybe fifty, sixty dollars. And for that, you get unbelievable support for your product and your website and you can give your URL if something goes wrong and chances are the developer will take a look and troubleshoot for you and if you get it from those other nefarious means uh, you don't get that support so it's it's worth it just in the support aspect alone if you can find a good theme developer that can do that so I encourage everybody out there spend just a little bit of extra money as I said, it's your web property, so you wouldn't you wouldn't paint your house with uh, cans that you found in the garbage, right? So just 
<laughs> right. Get some good stuff, put a good base on it, and uh, you'll you'll thank yourself for it later. Yeah. Now that that being said, um, you know, so I agree. I use a paid. Um, I use uh, Elegant Themes Divi for my website, and actually. Um, the campfire.tv is also uh, using Divi, um, so I pay Elegant Themes for that mm -hmm. um, for that membership. Um, I will say though, when I was first starting out with WordPress, um, I started out with a free theme, and I just got the theme from uh, inside WordPress, right, where you can search for a new theme, and I think that's perfectly okay. Um, it turned out as I leveled up my experience and started to try new things, right, and and had more requirements for what I wanted on my website, uh, it made sense to go out and get a, a premium theme, right? But uh, you don't need one to start with, um, and you don't need premium plugins to start with. But as as you level up and and you need more advanced things, uh, I guess the point is don't be afraid. To um, to look at some of those some of those vendors and and you know you can Google things like um, top plugin vendors or, or top WordPress plugins or top um, WordPress themes or most beautiful WordPress themes. Uh, those you'll see um, you know posts from uh, community members. You'll see posts from uh, big you know, tech logs like uh, CNET and stuff like that, um, that will give you some really good places to uh, to start looking at, at reputable companies. And of course, if you, if you want to know, um, you know, if something's reputable or not, or if, if one of us has heard of it, you can always, you know, tweet it at us and say, hey, have you heard of this? Um, people within the WordPress community really want to help out, um, especially new WordPress producers. Um, so if you have a question, just shoot it at um, you know one of us. Uh, you know. Uh, so Josh, your Twitter is at McNary. Yes, sir. At okay. McNary. At McNary. So at M C N A R Y. And Kurt, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, it's at K underscore P A Y N E. Okay. Um, and then. Uh, Marcus, what's yours? Is at Marcus Couch. All right, that's easy enough. And mine's at If You Will It, um, which it is my dream. I th <laughs> there it is. I always thought it was such an easy one to remember, and people are like, "What is that again?" You know what? Big, big Lebowski fans totally know it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so that's uh, man. Google Hangout is doing some weird stuff right now. Um, we have like uh, doubles of some of the people in our <laughs> in our chat, so I apologize for the glitches. Um, so let's take a few minutes. We're we're headed into the last ten minutes of the show, and I want to give a chance uh, to everybody on the call to talk about anything anything within the community that um, that is new as far as WordPress security, uh, anything in general that people should be looking out for. Um, if there's Anything coming up, you know, Marcus? If you have any uh, any any new projects you're working on, or Kurt, or or um, Josh, now is a good time to just say, hey, we've you know got something going on. So, uh, Josh, do you have anything anything to mention? Anything new in the WordPress security world uh, that people should know about, real quick? Yeah, well, you know, um, I I know you, Bendo, and I think Kirk were at. And I bet Mark as well as well was at uh, WordCamp uh, San Francisco uh, yeah. last week, and I, unfortunately I couldn't make it all the way from Iowa. Uh, my my wings weren't that strong to get out there <laughs> last week. But um, uh, so I'm curious, kind of what you guys have to say about that, uh, and and what kind of maybe security or just generic topics that came out of that outside of you know what I read uh, from afar uh, was. So maybe I'll pass it over to to one of you guys to give us a report. Yeah, so we'll go over to Kurt in order of the humans that I see on my <laughs> on my screen. Um, so, Kurt, do, do you have any takeaway from, uh, especially working in San Francisco, and any um, or or just new releases of WordPress or something like that? Um, so, there's a few big things going on uh, from WordCamp San Francisco. Uh, Matt talked about in his state of the word. You can see the the notes online, or you can just watch the whole talk. He talks specifically about trying to get everyone who's running WordPress to be running on a more recent version of PHP, 
and their WordPress development team is going to be working with the hosts, and they've actually already talked with us, and they've talked with uh, the other hosts as well about how they can how they can best accomplish this while maintaining uh, the best experience for customers. So once they can get everyone on a more recent version of PHP, then they can start. Uh, upping the requirements for WordPress so that future versions of WordPress will require PHP 5.3, 5.4, 5.5. .5. And that's important because uh, WordPress right now requires 5.2, and that is no longer patched, I believe, uh, for security reasons or for security uh, issues. That's so that's one thing. Um, in WordPress 4.0, if you're not running 4.0, I highly recommend it. They actually kind of sneaked in a security fix in that one. Um, prior to WordPress 4.0, if someone got your WordPress login cookie, they could actually log in as you for up to, uh, I believe it was 48 hours or two weeks, depending on if you hit remember me. So, uh, And there was no way to, to fix that unless you just changed your password every time you logged out. Uh, and then as of 4.0, they, uh, they fix that. So when you log out, it actually logs out all of your sessions. And then in 4.1, they're going to extend that further to make it more, more uh, transparent as to what's going on. So you'll be able to, to have more control over your, what your sessions are actually doing. I, I use sessions in the loosest term of the word. It's not an actual PHP session. It's, uh, it's more of a, a who's maintaining an active uh, login uh, session with WordPress. Gotcha. So cool. that, that's what's going on. All right, thanks, Kurt. And then, Marcus, what uh, what do you have to say about uh, security or stuff that went on in WordCamp SF? Okay. Security-wise, uh, my myself, I use a plugin slash uh, service called Clef that I actually uh, just use with my phone. So instead of my login screen, I get kind of a barcode that flashes. Uh, and what I end up doing is is taking a photo of it, or you know, as as many people do, scanning barcodes or scanning UPC codes, uh, QR codes, things like that, and that's what logs me in. Uh, I can grant access to other people to do the same on my websites, but on my phone, I can actually, uh, if I could just pull the clef uh, screen up here really quick, uh, it allows me to actually set a limit as to, um, so this, if I can just hold this up here, it allows me to be logged in infinitely, okay? Mm. But I could change the user, or I could actually time it to say, uh, only keep me logged in for one hour, and so here it's counting down. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's a security feature of, I think I'm just going to be working for another hour. Um, let's keep that connection with myself and my own uh, WordPress installation going. So there's many layers of users that you can use, uh, and this is a free plugin and service, and I use it for not only myself but uh, for client work as well. Yeah, it's like yes. one, it's it's one step beyond the uh, the two-factor type thing I was talking about. I mean, it's mm -hmm. the same kind of concept, but it's awesome. You could actually say, "I want to time out in a certain amount of, of minutes." That's really cool. Yeah, it's a sleep timer basically for your work online. So, Marcus, have you done a lot of research into Clef? I have, yes. So, uh, this is your, please educate me. Um, when I heard, when I've seen the Clef videos and kind of the the market or the the value proposition for it, mm -hmm. um, they maintain the login tokens mm -hmm. uh, on their site. Does that just kind of shift? You know, does that does that just make your Clef account like just a really really high value target? Uh, if someone stole your phone or something, do they now just have? Well, it, it, integrations with Facebook and yeah, the the app itself also has its own secondary passcode. Okay, so nobody can just get in my phone and hit clef and start logging in. Right. If they do, I hope they at least contribute some content that's worthwhile. <laughs> uh, <laughs> does anybody does anybody know about Fido? Um, if if that's if there is any plan to. Um, integrate that sort of authentication into so that's the new um, it's a new USB key that Google um, is now mm -hmm. compatible with. 
Uh, I, I had one ordered next day aired to me uh, the day I heard about it. Um, is, is, does anybody know if that's a planned uh, enhancement in WordPress uh, coming up in the future? Or? I don't know. Um, I, I saw a demo of this at WordCamp San Francisco myself, um, where there were there were some some smaller prototypes of like USB mini things that you could actually tap, and it would paste in a new authentication code that you would then put into the system. Uh, it's getting very complex as far as our layers of security. Uh, I, I even on WordPress Weekly found this plugin that I nicknamed the two bagger because it it actually made you log in once and then you had a secondary password after that that you had to log in again. Oh, I heard about that one and 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 there was yeah yeah so I I listened to that episode and you were talking about, you know, is there any value add and I I think the answer is you know, I I I hate to I hate to say it about a, you know, a plugin um but you know, I I kind of tend to think that one password or two passwords or five passwords is still a password, you know? It's still the right. same. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've enabled two-factor authentication basically wherever any service I use can do it. Um, and like I said, there are some, within the WordPress realm, the, the one that I was suggesting, the Google Authenticator plugin, there's some limits on what it'll work with. So then you end up you know, not being able to use those other services, other plugins you want to use. So sometimes I've had to turn it off and just go back to the other things I was suggesting. But uh, if you can turn on two-factor, that to me is the, it's becoming more commonplace and easier to understand, but it's, that's the price of security. It's like even using 1Password or LastPass or whatever to help manage your logins across the web, it's like you have to, you have to kind of be a geek to use them. And, uh, and then if they are really easy or become easier, maybe like Apple's solution or, or, or uh, Google Chrome could ask for passwords, then those mm -hmm. become bigger targets. So it's this real catch-22 and um, you got to kind of fit, again, the ROI of how, how useful is that security to you or how far are you willing to go and what other measures do you have in place if you have a major problem. Yeah, so, um, so really interesting conversation and um, really great presentation. Josh, uh, sorry for everybody watching that we had issues with the video and uh, with the presentation. We'll have to troubleshoot and figure out what happened with, uh, with Google Hangouts. Um, We've done quite a few of them and haven't haven't had this sort of issue before, so we'll have to we'll dig in. We'll make it great uh, for the next time. Uh, which reminds me, um, our next uh, hangout is going to be um, when is it? Oh, all right. So it's going to be Tuesday, November 11th, uh, and it's brand building with authenticity. Um, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Uh, it's not gonna be just WordPress. It's gonna be you know brand building in general. Um, so get ready to see an invitation for that coming soon. Um, I'll also be posting a schedule of upcoming shows so that you can kind of keep track of it uh, on thecampfire.tv. So it's just t h e campfire.tv. So. Uh, feel free to jump on there. Um, I'll add a subscription link there too so that you can subscribe to updates. Um, in the meantime, Josh and Kurt, I think, are going to both create posts to throw on uh, the campfire.tv with some security info. Um, Marcus, if you feel like throwing your hat into the ring, that's cool too. Um, but, uh, but look over there and then um, there, there's going to be some more uh, stuff coming soon for the campfire. We're just getting started, so uh, thanks for bearing with uh, you know us uh, kind of ramping this thing up, and thank you very much for uh, your time, Joshua. Uh, I know that being a guy that is creating a startup or in the midst of creating a startup, you know, a, a, a venture where you're kind of hacking it out and, and uh, you know, got all sorts of things going on and maybe not a ton of time. It's awesome to have you um, you on this hangout and, and, and giving your time to the community. And uh, Awesome. And, and Kurt, um, awesome to have you as a guest host today. And Marcus, I guess this is the start yeah. of a beautiful uh, co-hosting relationship. So, um, yeah, absolutely. We, we had fun hanging out together at uh, WordCamp San Francisco and talked about a few ideas. Um, 
but yeah, we'll put some more production elements into the show here and um, kind of reach back, maybe do some polls that we can interact with, you know, the, the following show or, or lead up to it, uh, you know, as a precursor to the show that we're working on. So there'll be a lot more to come. Cool. Yeah, Marcus is going to school me because he uh, he's a, a podcasting and a Google Hangout veteran. So uh, so w- welcome welcome that um, update to what we're doing. So anyway, thanks a lot to everybody for coming to episode two of uh, the campfire, and uh, we're signing off for today. We'll see you the next time.